The Holy Gospel this morning is taken from St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you in a little while. The world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. And on that day you will know that I am in my Father, in you, in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. This memory of mine is distinct, though I do not know when it happened or even how old I was when the event or when this uh, memory was given to me. So I'm not sure uh, if this vivid memory is just one moment in time or the compilation of, of many moments like it. But the memory is still nonetheless very distinct in my mind. My mother and I are sitting at a table and I'm writing on paper, or at least making some marks, so I believe I must be in kindergarten, maybe, maybe first grade, and we were learning our ABCs. Well, I was learning. My mother knew her ABCs. I was learning my ABCs. How to write each one carefully, writing on paper, or at least making some marks, uh, writing, you know, in lowercase letters and uppercase uh, letters, on writing on this uh, uh, blue-lined newspaper. Do you remember that? Uh, with, uh, with rows, uh, uh, blue lines, solid lines on the top and the bottom, and then, and then a dotted line through the middle. And we were writing the alphabet within the confines of these blue lines, making sure that the letters were curved or crossed or slanted exactly at the right point on the dotted line. And this, of course, was called penmanship, right? Penmanship. I was not good at penmanship. I still am not good at penmanship, but I was working on it. I remember the daunting task of forming each letter tediously and slowly and, and with care, but somehow my hand just would not do what my brain wished it would do, and my letters bore little resemblance to uh, the cheat sheet that I had next to me. Frustrated with the slow progress, I remember asking my mother to write my name on the sheet of paper. And so with ease, she took the pencil and with graceful, fluid strokes, she formed the letters of my name. Kendall Lee Stelter. And I remember asking, is that my name? Is that my name? And she said to me, yes, that is your name. And she pointed to Kendall, and she said it out loud. This is Kendall. She pointed to Lee, and she said it out loud. She pointed to Stelter, and she said it out loud. Sounding these words out as if I had never heard them before. And there it was. This, this name that I had been called since birth, this name that I knew as my own, was as much a part of me as anything else. It was as much a part of me as my home, 
as my family, as my own toys that I played with, the Johnny West set and the play guitar that was my own. This was my name. And it looked so beautiful in my mother's handwriting. As I said, I'm not sure about the details of of that memory, but I am sure about the feeling that I had, a feeling that somehow I was more real, I was more important, I was more permanent, because my name was written down before me. And I'm happy to tell you that I did eventually learn to write my own name, not well, but acceptable enough to get through kindergarten. I even passed first grade writing my name. Tomorrow, our nation gathers, and we gather to remember those who have given their lives in service to their country and a tribute to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for duty, honor, and country. And I still remember when the World Trade Center was attacked on 9-11, the memorial that they had for all those that died in that tragedy, and I, I'm sure that you remember this as well. I was moved as family members and friends came one by one to the podium to speak the name of their mother or of their father or their sister or their brother or their nephew or their cousin or their niece or their friend for all the world to hear. They all came up to the podium to speak a name. Why was that? Why was that event so important? Why were those names so important? Because we do not want their names to vanish or to disappear from our memory or from our consciousness. Like the, kind of like the cloud of dust that hovered over New York City on that fateful day, we do not want these names to ever disappear. We do not want to get on with our lives or travel or shop as our government shamefully advised us to do after that event. We want to stop. We want to stop and call the names out of those who were lost. We want to speak their names once again into our collective memory so that we will never forget them. Memorial Day is about names. And I'm sure that you have names that are going through your mind at this time. Names of loved ones that you have lost. Whose name do you remember this morning? Some of you served in World War II, some of you in, served in Korea, some in Vietnam, some of you served in other arenas. Do you wish to call out and remember some names? Do any of you wish to call out and remember a name today on this Memorial Day weekend? I invite you to do so right now. Call out that name that you have in your mind or in your heart. Call those names out. Call those names out. Name those names. Call those names out. Name those names. Name the names. Name the names. That's important for us, isn't it? 
when Jesus speaks, at least in John's gospel, Jesus does a lot of speaking in John's gospel. He does a lot of talking in John's gospel, almost as if he's trying to say things again and again and again and again so that his disciples can, can catch on. But of course, his disciples rarely catch on. So he says it over and over. His disciples don't catch on in part because I think they're afraid. I think they're perhaps afraid that their fate was going to be not much different than Jesus' fate. And so Jesus wants his disciples to know some things, and, and Jesus wants you to know some things. Jesus wants me to know some things as well. And so in this morning's gospel, Jesus says, I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you shall live also. And one can imagine those frightened, befuddled men kind of scratching their beards and, and looking at one another with dull looks and and, and saying to each other, well, what on the earth is Jesus talking about now? So Jesus tries to say the same thing in a different way. He says, on that day you will know that I am in my Father, in you, you in me, and I in you. And Jesus says, this is the truth. Jesus says, this is the spirit of truth that is coming this is the spirit of truth that is among us. Have you met that truth lately? Have you met this spirit of truth lately? Sometimes we think of truth as an idea, but here in the gospel, Jesus tells us that the truth is not an idea. The truth is a person, Jesus Christ, not something but some one. And through Jesus and through the Holy Spirit, this truth gets personal. This truth comes to us and this truth lives in us and among us. You see, you don't have to go it on your own because you have this God who lives among you and in you. You have a God who knows your name. You have a God who loves you in simply an indescribable way. A God who loves you ultimately and wholly. A God who knows your name and speaks your name just as you spoke the names of your loved ones. This God knows your name, and this God has written your name upon Jesus' heart, and this God has written your name upon the palms of Jesus' nail-pierced hands. No matter your joy, no matter your trouble, no matter your difficulty, no matter your grief, this God knows your name. Amen.